Good afternoon, Jason Robinson here. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Today we're going to discuss how to take care of your platens a little bit better. It's something that gets ignored because um, we're changing molds in and out so quick, sometimes even two or three times a day in certain situations. And we're, we're in a hurry when we want to get the mold out, get the new mold in and get running good parts again because it's all about selling time in it. So, but there are a few things that we need to take care of. At every mold change will be great, um, at least on maybe a weekly cadence. So we, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you some basic um, things that you can do to take care of your platens. Also how to take care of the, the threaded holes in your, in your platen for the clamp bolts to go into. And a little bit of self care on the, on the locating ring uh, bushing where the locating ring goes in. Those are things that gets damaged. Um, we get build up on the platen and it kind of looks like rust or a darker color. Um, we can also have imperfections in the platen face where a mold might hit it, or maybe one mold has sat, sat in that one position for a long time, and we kind of deform the platen face. So when we deform the platen face, we're not clamping the mold evenly like we would if the, if the platen is nice and square and it's nice and clean. If we get a buildup of, of off-gassing or, or rust even on the platen, that creates a high spot and it acts similar to putting a shim in your mold. So a, a quick, on a 40 ton machine, a quick five, five minute um, stoning process will take care of that. And if you do it every time or at least once a week, this job is real easy. Now, if you ignore it for, for months or years, it can be a, a pretty big task. But best thing to do, like any housekeeping task, is to stay on top of it. Always remember to put on your safety glasses. Let's take a look at some of the tools we're going to need to take care of these platens. The first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a wire, a brass bristle brush, um, not steel, but brass, roughly the same size as the bolt that's going in the hole. And then some type of cordless drill, we're going to put that in there and we're going to use that to clean out the threads, clean all the gunk out. The next thing we're going to need is a tap, uh, preferably a flat bottom tap. So it goes all the way down. And here's what's real important. Make sure you have the right tap for the bolt. So if you don't know how to do that, ask a maintenance guy how to do it and he'll make sure you get the right tap. Here's the platen we're gonna, we're gonna work on today. You see that rust, you can see exactly the shape of the clamp plate of the mold. We're gonna get rid of all that rust and build up. So you can see the size of, size of the mold that's been running in there for years. You can see the imprint now. So I spray it with some WD-40, give it a wipe real quick, uh, get anything really loose off of there before we bring the stone in. So you can buy these stones from uh, McMaster Car, a few different places. Mine is a round stone. You can get like rectangular stones that look like an eraser. Um, and they usually come in two grits. So there's a very coarse grit and then the other side has a much finer grit. I usually start with the coarse grit depending on how bad the platen is. Um, and you just want to cover the whole platen. You can see the dirt building up as I, as I do my cleaning there. Um, yeah, my arm got tired. So I had to swap arms, hadn't done this as much as I should have, like most of us. So um, if you do this at every mold change, you almost have to do nothing. You, you could almost do just some scotch Brite and a, and a uh, rag if you did it at every mold change. Um, it's been a bit, you need to use this stone. So just every so often, take your rag and clean all the loose stuff off that you just broke loose. And then once I, I, I don't feel any more high spots or burrs or, um, or nicks on the plat and on my stone, I eventually I'm gonna flip that stone over and hit it with the, the other side, which will be the fine grit side. So you can see how much better that platen looks already. And all this does is it's gonna help me make sure that mold is supported evenly across the platen. So there are any high spot, it doesn't take much, just a few thousands, you know, those are the same dimension a tool room would shim the mold. So if you have a thousands build up a crud on your platen, you're basically shimming the mold. So you want to keep these things as clean as possible. So I did it with the fine grit side, give it one last wipe. And next I'm going to go around to the front side and just make sure I get all those, those operator side, um, near to the camera, get those nice and clean too. 
Let's check the locating ring for any buildup or high spots in there, which happens a lot of time when people smoosh the, lo the locating ring in. So now I'm going to use a, a wire brush of some sort and a drill and just get all the extra stuff off of there. You can get the purging, the, the buildup off of there. If the metal is actually a little bit deformed, this might clean it up a little bit. And all this does is help the locating ring slide in, slide in there easily so you don't get it stuck and you don't force it in while you're doing the mold change. Give that locating ring one last check with your finger. Feel for any birds or high spots. And if you do, you can also get a little file and take it off well, that way. Now let's take that wire brush, the brass wire brush, and let's clean all the, the loose stuff that might accumulate in the, the bolt hole. So I've sprayed it with some WD-40, put the brass brush in there. I'm going to do this in reverse so it pulls all the stuff out towards the platen instead of put burying it down in the bottom of the hole. Again, make sure you're using a brass brush, not a, a steel wire brush. Can you see the stuff coming out there? Um, this one isn't too bad, but you never know what's going to be in there. And all that, uh, if that stuff's in there, it makes the bolt hard to tighten up with your with your hand. And then you end up cross threading the, the bolt and then you got a bad hole that doesn't work anymore. Now let's take that tap, and what we're gonna do is called chasing the threads. I'm not re-tapping the hole here. I should be able to turn it in finger tight to get it started. And if you can't turn it in finger tight like that, probably be, should be something maintenance gets involved with. So I got it started. Now I'm just gonna use my crescent wrench to chase it down in there. I, it, this, the tie bar was too close, so I couldn't use the T-handle. But um, I'm not really, this isn't requiring a lot of effort on my part. I'm just running it down through, cleaning all the last little bit of stuff out of the threads. Um, and you, it's amazing how much easier how it is to tighten them bolts up when you're doing a mold change. If you have to tighten up your bolt or just thread your bolt in with a torque wrench, then there's something wrong with either the bolt threads or the threads of the hole. So doing this occasionally keeps it all really good. If the tap goes in there this easy, you know the bolt up. And I'm gonna turn it back out. It should back out that easy. And if it doesn't, like I said, something's wrong. And then give it one last check, take a bolt, and it should thread in that easy. That's how easy you want your mold changers to be threading in bolts by hand. You don't want them using anything else other than their hands to do this. One last thing, let's look at how far your bolt should go in the hole. So the rule is, is you take the diameter of the threads of your bolt, and here they're 16 millimeter. So it should thread in one and a half times that. So that would mean if it's a 16 millimeter diameter, every time you tighten that up, it should go in at least 24 millimeter. That ensures that you're not gonna strip out the hole or strip out the threads on the, on the bolt itself. So, you know, just make sure that your bolt is the right length. It, it can be too long and bottom out, or if it's too short, you don't have enough threads to grab hold of. I'd like to thank everybody for watching our video today. I hope it was helpful. Um, I forgot to show you guys this piece of equipment when I showed the list of tools we're going to use, but this is the stone I used. And if you look at it, it's got a coarse grid on this side and a fine grid on this side. I actually purchased this off Amazon for $48. I think it's under its categorized as a sharpening stone, but it works really good for your platens too. Again, $48 and this will last a pretty good while, so you're not going to be buying these every month or anything. So just a little bit of care on your platens can make the mold changes um, a lot easier for mold changers to do as far as the bolts, cleaning out the threads and chasing the threads with the tap. Um, stoning the platens with this is a little more subtle, but over time that buildup will cause uh, like a shimming effect on your mold and you'll start to see like parts of your mold maybe have flash in this corner whereas it don't in this corner and maybe you didn't used to and it, it just helps to flatten support your mold the way it's supposed to if you keep it like it was when it was brand new. And as far going back to the threads again everyone's doing more and more mold changes every day so 
if we can keep people from having to struggle with getting the bolts in and um, using the wrong um, type of bolt and stripping the thread out, then you can't even use a bolt, uh, one of the holes in, in the plat. And so that just takes up a lot of time and makes small changes take longer. So anyway, um, appreciate you watching. If you like the video, please click the like button. Um, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Recommend it to friends if you want to share the video link. That's awesome. We love that. Um, any comments you have about the, the video, if your feedback or what you do differently. And again, this is just the basics. There's more you can do. Just trying to get you guys thinking about it. Um, we try to reply to all the comments. So if you, if you reply and you like it or you don't like it, that's fine. We'll try to uh, interact with you and get some feedback going. That's what this is all about. So thanks everyone and you have a good week. Bye.